Hello, my name is Pete Gerlach, and I'm a student of human nature all my life, over seven decades, and that has included being a family systems therapist, and more recently, a trauma recovery therapist. I've been doing that since 1979. This is one of a series of videos that I'm glad to upload to YouTube to pass on to you what I've learned across these decades as a person, as a student, and as a therapist. In this particular video, I want to focus on two related relationship and family stressors. They are being a scapegoat and being a black sheep. As I began to prepare for this video, uh, I found out the origin of scapegoating. Do you know where that term came from? I didn't. It turns out that it goes back to early um, Jewish tradition where people lived in tribes and it was an accepted practice at that time with religious overtones to select a goat from the tribe's herd and uh, put the tribe's problems on the head, figuratively speaking, of that goat, and then send the goat off into the wilderness. That was designated a scapegoat. Lo and behold, that tradition has come all the way across the centuries into the present time. The theme of scapegoating is some or all group members blaming the problems of the group, significant problems, on one individual. For example, well, if it weren't for George's addiction, we would be fine. Um, it can be for personal personality traits, like uh, if Maria had a sense of humor, we'd be far less sensitive and we'd get along together and the kids would enjoy playing with us more often. Um, a frequent source scapegoating is differences in religious beliefs. We all are good Southern Baptists, and Jose insists on believing in uh, Unitarianism. Uh, he's bad news. Scapegoating, to state the obvious, causes everybody problems. It causes this, the goat, quote-unquote, hurt, resentment, defensiveness, uh, anger, frustration, um, isolation perhaps, avoidance. It causes the members of the group who are doing the scapegoating, relationship triangles, persecutor, victim, rescuer triangles. They are very divisive. They're very stressful for everyone. If you don't know what relationship triangles are, Take a look in Lesson 4 in my YouTube channel and or the related articles in my nonprofit website, sfhelp.org. So everybody loses when there are significant scapegoating dynamics in a family or some other group. Before looking at what can you do in case you were designated as a goat, a goat, Let's look at a similar dynamic that you're probably familiar with, at least in your mind. Um, this is the black sheep syndrome. Once again, I did not know the origin of that term, now I do. What I found is that in medieval Europe, um, many people made their living by uh, raising sheep. And genetically, what they discovered was that occasionally, sheep would, uh, a lamb would develop black wool. And to their frustration, they found they could not dye black wool. Therefore, it was essentially useless as a commodity. So anytime a lamb developed a black wool, or a black sheep, it was shunned and uh, felt to be useless and bad. So that's where the term came from, okay? We have come a long way from medieval Europe, although families and businesses and communities and churches and nations 
still designate black sheep. Um, members, for whatever reason, that the group feels is a bad person or a bad group or uh, a bad family or something like that. Um, do you know of a family who disapproves of one of their members and shuns him or her, rejects him or her, ignores them, um, discounts them, minimizes them, isolates them? Do you know anybody like that? Um, has by any chance that happened to you? Do you now feel, have you felt, or do you now feel like you are a, quote, black sheep? Um, black sheep like scapegoating. The black sheep syndrome um, is stressful for everybody, not just the sheep. Um, it creates triangles, divisiveness, judgmentalism. People take sides. Uh, promotes stress um, and conflict. So there is no redeeming value to the black sheep syndrome, like scapegoating. They're both harmful. Why do people do this? To summarize a very complex subject, in my experience as a person and as a therapist, there are three core reasons that members of a group do either one of these two harmful things. Uh, the first is unawareness. The leaders of the group or family don't know what they think, what they feel, what they need, and what's going on among them and inside them. They're unaware. The second thing is ignorance. They lack important information. What information? You'll find that in my website and in all my videos. They don't know this stuff. No one ever taught them or their ancestors, so they're ignorant. The third reason for scapegoating and black sheeping is inherited psychological wounds. There are six of them. They pass down the generations until people become aware of them and intentionally commit to healing them. So, unawareness, ignorance, and psychological wounds cause families and other groups to choose scapegoats and to choose black sheep. Does that make sense to you? If not, what's your explanation? Now, in case you are concerned with being a scapegoat or a black sheep, or you care deeply for someone who has been designated one of those two harmful, stressful things, what can you do? There's a quite a list of things you can do, but I'm going to not dwell on them in detail. The single thing that I recommend that you do to widen your awareness and your options is to read this free article on my nonprofit educational website. Here's the link. It gives you specific resources for dealing with either of these two harmful social dynamics. Real quickly, you might say, well, okay, but fine. What, what are these options that he's talking about? Here's a very quick summary of the, art, uh, the resources you'll find in that article. The first option is to diagnose yourself for psychological wounds. If you find any, commit to reducing them. You can. Lesson one in my website shows you how. Draft a bill of personal rights for yourself as a dignified human being, and then live by it. You have rights, so does everybody else. Try out the options. In two articles you'll find in Lesson 4 in my website, the articles are on how to improve and gain self-love and self-respect. Another option you have, in case you're a scapegoat or a black sheep, diagnose the group of whom you are a member, which you're a member. Um, there are ways in my website and my um, videos that show you how to diagnose the what's called the nurturance level of the group you belong to. I bet you will find that the group 
has what I call a low nurturance level, meaning it is dysfunctional. That, if you do that, you may be able to replace bitterness and anger and blame with compassion. Your stress goes down. Another recommendation you'll find in this article is get to know the powerful serenity prayer. If you don't know what it is, use your favorite search engine. It will come up immediately and illustrate what it is. Learn to practice that every day, every night. It will yield serenity and peace, particularly in the situation of scapegoating and black sheeping. A final recommendation you'll find in this article is a suggestion to learn and practice the relationship skill of effective assertion. Learn how to identify and assert your boundaries. Um, that can help you gain serenity and complacency and follow your own path instead of being over-focused on trying to defend yourself from people in a dysfunctional group. So to recap, the purpose of this video has been to refresh your understanding of two dynamics that you're aware of already, scapegoating, blaming some member of a group for the group's problems, and being a black sheep, being designated uh, and shunned and scorned and rejected by a group uh, rather than included uh, and accepted. The purpose of the video has been to uh, raise your awareness of these two dynamics and ask you the question, are you experiencing, have you or do you now experience either one of these stressful dynamics or do you care for someone who is snarled in either one of these? If so, this video points you at an article which lists a number of practical, effective options that you or someone else has um, to disentangle yourself from these stressors and heal yourself and live a more productive life. So, I hope you study this article, find out more, pass on the ideas here to anyone else you think that would profit by them. As always, I welcome your feedback on this video, on any other video, and or my website and the seven self-improvement lessons you'll find there. I'm particularly glad to receive any stories from you in case these uh, suggestions I'm making here make a positive difference in your life. I hope they will. Thanks for watching.